Aloha! Welcome back to the channel at Kona Face Center and we're so glad you're here with us today. I have one of my approximately 15 minute teachings for you and it's called This or That. Who or what are you going to choose? So we're getting ready and I want you to hit that thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed please do so. And we have a lot of things going on during the week on the video side so it would be good if you subscribe because then you'll get notified if you hit the little bell if there's one there i know sometimes it's not there when i go to subscribe or have the bell notification but do the best you can and hopefully you'll get notified that we are on well i'm going to get started and i'm reading from the new american standard bible and if jacob's watching that's for him and first corinthians 1 20 to 32. Okay, here we go. Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know him. Hmm. God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. So, I'm one of those foolish things, but praise the Lord, God uses us. Verse 22, For indeed Jews ask for signs, and Greeks search for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to Jews a stumbling block and to Gentiles foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, I read that wrong. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, yes, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Verse 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. This is really key. This is really, really important. Because when we choose, we want to be choosing this or that, depending on God's choice, not on our natural choice, our emotions, our intellect, any of that. Okay, let's continue along in 1 Corinthians 1 and in verse 26. For consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong, and the base things of the world, and the, dis and the despised God has chosen, the things that are not, so that he may nullify the things that are. I'm going to read verse 28 again because it's a mouthful. And the base things of the world, and the despised God has chosen, the things that are not, so that he may nullify the things that are, so that no man may boast before God. What are we going to boast in? But by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Okay, so that would be a good portion of scripture to go back and review. Joshua 24 and 15. We're talking about this or that. What are we going to choose? If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And there's only one. And his name is Jesus. Second Samuel 16 and 18. Then Hushai said to Absalom, No, for whom the Lord this people and all the men of Israel have chosen, his I will be, and with him I will remain. So the key in this is that it's the Lord. It's the Lord. And this is when they were choosing between Absalom and David, when Absalom rejected his father and deceived his father and 
they're saying, no, God hasn't chosen Absalom. God has chosen David, and that's who I'm going to go with, whoever God has picked in the agreement of the people. Let's go to 2 Samuel 24, verses 12 and 14. Verse 12, go and speak to David, thus the Lord says. I am offering you three things. Choose for yourself one of them, which I will do to you. Now this is, if you go back and read previously to this point, what David did was he ordered a census. And even his right-hand guy tried to talk him out of it, but he ordered it anyway. And it was a sinful thing to do because it was a pride thing to do to know how many men you had serving you and were in your army and all of that. And God didn't want that done unless he specifically declared to somebody to do it. All right? And there's times he does. So it says, I am offering you three things. Choose for yourself one of them, which I will do to you. Why is this to you? Because this was a discipline for the choice that David had made. In verse 13, it says, So Gad came to, came to David and told him and said to him, Shall seven years of famine come to you in, in your land? Or will you flee three months before your foes while they pursue you? Or shall there be three days pestilence in your land? Now consider and see what answer I shall return to him who sent me. This was Old Testament times. That's when they had prophets, seers, and that's who interjected between the person and God. Now, sometimes the Holy Spirit came upon them for specific purposes and words and things like that. But it was different because when Jesus went to the cross, before he went, he said he would give us a helper, a comforter, somebody who would tell us all the things that he had said, remind us. And that is the Holy Spirit, who we now get baptized in and have, and have. It's, he's the best gift we ever got. Okay, then David said to Gad, I am in great distress. Let us now fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. David chose wisely, and it was still devastating. But he wanted things to stop so he repented of his sin and he said God let it fall on me not all these innocent people they didn't do this I did this and that's what we need to do when sin comes upon us we need to get rid of it as soon as possible because sin never just involves one person it hurts many Deuteronomy 39 and 19 I will call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. Now this is, isn't just talking about living on earth, but this is living eternally. And this isn't talking about just the curse that can happen on earth, but it's talking about hell, da damnation, and fire. It really is. So... God wants us to live, and he wants us to live eternally with him. That's what Jesus going to the cross, being resurrected, shedding his blood, is all about. He did that for us, and he did it once and for all. Let's go to 1 Kings 18 and 21. Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you hesitate between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people did not answer him a word. I'm going to tell you something that is just one of my pet peeves that drives me crazy. And a lot of it is it's because of my behavioral style, my personality, and who I am. I don't like wishy-washy, wishy-washy. Should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I. I'd rather choose and make a mistake and learn from that mistake than not choose at all because I can't figure out what to do. I have the voice of God. I have the Holy Spirit. There is no reason that if you are born again, spirit-filled believers, that you have to be wishy-washy. And it doesn't, when God asks us a question, we need to answer the question. Not this and that and the other thing and underneath and above and sideways and all that. 
we need to answer the question that he asks us. Doesn't it bug you when you ask somebody a question and they're out in left field giving you a different answer that has nothing to do with what you are asking them? Now, I'm just saying, and even some of you that may not have the same behavioral style as me, it is still good to answer the question, especially when God asks. All right? So, and he's talking here about that hesitation, and he's saying, how long are you going to do this? Who are you going to serve? Decide. Are you going to serve God or are you going to serve the devil? I always think of that old Bob Dylan song. you got to serve somebody, either God or the devil. Well, I pray and hope, because this is God's will for your life, that you serve the Lord Jesus and not the devil. You can tell the difference. Are you living in sin? You living in righteousness. Okay, let's go to Mark chapter 3 and ver verses 13 through 16. And he went up the mountain and summoned those whom he himself wanted. And they came to him, and he appointed twelve, so that they would be with him, and he would send them out to preach, and to have authority to cast out the demons. And he appointed the twelve. Okay, I stopped there. I'm not going to read through all the names. Hopefully you know the twelve names of, of those he appointed. Now, he had gone up and prayed. And then he chose... And then he appointed. And who? This is Jesus. This is when he appointed his disciples to become apostles. Okay? And he gave them authority, and he gave them abilities, and he gave them gifts at their appointing. So it's important to know this. Jesus just didn't come up with an answer and said, Oh, I like that guy's haircut, and I like this guy because he talks well, and I like this guy because... He'll really be a good business agent for me. None of that. He picked 12, and he knew one was going to be a deceiver, that one was going to be a betrayer. And this is a whole other topic that I should talk about sometimes. Sometime, Everybody gets betrayed in their life, and sometimes not only once. And Jesus got betrayed once, but he gets betrayed all the time by believers now who start off as believers and then choose somebody else or something else. Okay, let's go to 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Well, he didn't do that just to do that, just because he loves you and has mercy, though he does have those things. But he made all of us to do that so we would be sent out just like the original. So when we come to the Lord, when we give our heart to Jesus, we need to recognize that we don't keep this in for ourselves. This is for the world. And some people he sends out to many, and some people he may only send out to one or two or a few. That's just how it is. But whoever God uses you for, that's what he's enabled you to do. Okay, let's go to Acts chapter 9, 10 and 19. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. Good response when God calls us. And the Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, so that he might regain his sight. So he was seeing this in a vision, in his spirit, not by his eyesight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard that I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he did to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Ananias was listening to the Lord. Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias departed and entered the house. And after laying his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you were coming, has sent me so that you may regain your sight 
and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell, excuse me, I lost my place. Okay, and verse 18. And immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he regained his sight. And he got up and was baptized, and he took food and was strengthened. I'm going to do a second part to this because my 15 minutes is about done. And I just want to tell you that this Paul, who Ananias went to, is the one that authored most of the books in the New Testament. He had ministries. He did missions trips. He started churches. Just think if Ananias had said no. Well, it would have been not so good for Ananias, and I believe God would have gotten somebody else. But this is who God had already told. He said Ananias is going to come. So Ananias must have been a faithful person of God, knowing God, knowing him, and knowing that he was going to return and do whatever the Lord told him to do, that he was going to step beyond the fear and operate in faith. So that's the same guy that we're talking about right now. They called him Saul of Tarsus, but he became Paul when he gave his life to the Lord. So thank you for being here, and I will see you next time on For Such a Time as This at Kona Faith Center. God bless you. You alone, Lord, made me a brand new creation. It is only by your spirit could this have been done.